Hi everybody, Paul here with a quick video on how to use the new TTT time predictor and more importantly, possibly a power planner to help you get the best from your team time trial teams, be it WTRL on a Thursday or even the ZRL on a Tuesday. Uh, and uh, this hopefully will take you through what you need to do and what you can do with the results when you get them. So visiting uh, Zwift-DS.com, obviously. Um, and uh, where the various videos are that I've done in the past. And don't forget the race notes each week, uh, which you can print off in a simple format to help you call the race distance. But matched with that is the time predictor and also uh, the power planner. So we'll go through to TTT time predictor. And after some blurb, the important bit is the requirements that you need before you start. So you need to get hold of the watts per kilo of your team uh, in a typical race. I don't mean their FTP or what they'd like to do, but what you think they're genuinely doing during events such as these. And then the corresponding raw watts for that same, uh, that same team member. You don't need to fill in weight because obviously one divided by the other um, gives the weight anyway. So, but height number three, height is useful. There is a time difference. Uh, Zwift algorithms do take height into account. Um, it's not that much, um, but it all helps. So uh, height in centimeters for each of your riders would also be uh, uh, useful. It is available on Zwift Power. Um, obviously, lots of talk about removing those kind of things from Zwift Power at the moment, uh, which I'm supportive of. Uh, so probably the easiest thing is to ask your team. Um, and that's the important fourth point on the requirements there. Make sure your team's happy. There's no personal information really in here. Um, nothing that um, necessarily identifies somebody specifically as identifiable, but um, uh, make sure you get the permission everybody's happy. And I've clarified that at the bottom of the page. So once you've done all that, let's crack on. So firstly, you need to choose the course. Uh, it's broken down by world, and uh, within each of them, there are courses that have already had uh, team time trials taking place on them on a Thursday normally. Um, not every course is available. There's been 100 plus uh, Thursday team time trials, but obviously courses are repeated. There's probably about 40, 30 or 40 courses uh, at most. Um, I will enhance this as we go, um, but at the moment, these are the, the courses that are available to have some kind of time prediction on. And as we move towards each one on a Thursday or Tuesday, I do revisit the accuracy uh, and play around with some of the numbers in the background uh, to make sure that you try and get as accurate time as possible. So let's go with, as it's most relevant, RGV in France. Uh, and for no reason other than I normally DS women's teams, we'll go with a female, uh, a female Vienna team. And here we go. From the drop down, you need to choose what's per kilo of each of your riders. Now you'll notice that the number starts at two. Uh, unfortunately, that's because you know, it, there is a linear uh, algorithm that's working through this. And the further away that uh, a team gets from some of the best teams, then unfortunately the accuracy does start to drift. Um, something that I'm working on, but for the moment, two watts per kilo is as low as I, I feel I can go uh, to maintain some decent accuracy. Hopefully that covers most team members though. So you need a minimum of four riders um, in order to continue through this, uh, but uh, I've done a full eight here. It will now remind you of uh, how many team members that you've put in and you need to add the raw watts. Uh, uh, here are some, some old numbers for me uh, while I've been testing. So I'm just gonna cheat and quickly fill these in, but uh, you probably won't have these drop downs. You'll need to, to fill them in as you go. We'll go for a fairly evenly mixed team. Uh, let's throw in a curveball of a lover and one of the higher ones. And then finally height 
I'll cheat again. When using this yourself, you should use a uh, tab through the various uh, fields rather than return, as you'll find that that will actually shoot you onto the next screen, which is not ideal, but you can come back and complete it. But uh, a, a, a usage tip would be to try and use tab all the way through. And we click update again. And there we go, simple as that. So the predicted target time for this team based on all the information entered would be 35 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, it's based on the values of the best male or female teams that have done this previously. It takes in your differences and watts per kilo, watts height and weight, and even the size of your squad versus the best. It does a bit of reasonably complicated maths uh, and works out uh, how you compare and therefore what your likely time would be. Uh, this is where the caveat comes in. Zwift events are highly dynamic. So uh, if people drop out, if you decide to pull over and wait, uh, if you have a big split, if there's a mechanical and you lose three riders, um, yeah, the time's going to be affected. But this is based on the idea that your team is reasonably well matched, that you're doing even turns or at least favoring the stronger riders uh, overall in those turns. Um, and that you're conducting yourself as a squad with a decent pace line uh, and making best use of the assets that you have available to you. Um, I'm confident that if you're doing that, uh, then by and large, I would probably get within 60 seconds of your, uh, your actual time on the day, assuming that you ride to the numbers that you've entered. Uh, it can be sometimes as close as six seconds. So, uh, it, it really, it really doesn't, really no way to know for sure. But I'm accurate, but it's it's fairly good. Uh, oh. Free click update. You'll now receive a, a unique code. Now this will be important later when I add extra functionality that will allow you to come back in uh, and effectively update your rider details at, on a new course. At the moment, each week you would need to start a new event, but you do need this unique code in order to move forward. Uh, if you would like to uh, get a more detailed breakdown of where you compare to the other teams, uh, to the best teams rather, and also to use the Power Planner. So I've just highlighted that code and I'm going to click on this orange and black link at the bottom here. Uh, now that's just passed it straight through, uh, which is useful. You can see uh, it won't always do that. You may have to, it may ask you to paste it in. Now you need some rider names. We'll just quickly do uh, just to now. Here you could put in initials, you could put in nicknames. Uh, I'd rather you didn't put in you know everybody's full name. Um, but anything will do really, and you'll see why you need it shortly. Once you have that, you can update. And here you go. Here's the predicted time broken down with some of the more details. So your power difference, your weight and height difference, and your team size all expressed in seconds if all other elements were equal versus the best team, which unsurprisingly, in this case, as a women's uh, result, is the Soxhawatts WRT. Now, finally, if you click update, uh, we can give you some suggested power figures for each rider, taking into account their weight and height. And here we have the power plan. Now, this shows for each rider, based on a rough 125% of the group's FTPs or race entries details that you've added, uh, what every rider should be doing in position one. So their time on the front, or what's per kilo they need to be doing on the front, the percentage of their FTP that those these figures represent, uh, the raw watts, and then we have their raw watts in positions two, three, four, and five, based on their height and weight to stay in a pace line. And we have the same for each rider. Now the important numbers here are the P1 watts for each rider and also the percentage of their FTP. As you can see in this instance, they're all around mid uh, 120 to 125, except for the rider here that we put in a curveball with a much lower FTP. You can see that 
Um, even position one at 125 percent of the group average, um, they're going to be really out of their depth and they really shouldn't be on the front. My suggestion would be that they simply ride in the wheels and help the numbers, um, help the team uh, stay together where possible. And you can flex this number based on uh, if you think that the team could go harder. And you can see the time on the front for each suggested rider changes. And this figure is based on how hard are they going versus their FTP. So we have 127%, 133, 131, 123, 125, 125, 160, uh, and 128. I would say that's probably about perfect as a team. Um, if you go too low, then you're not really going to beat the churning threshold blob. And if you go too high, go to 135. You may find that the turns get too short and the FTPs get too high. Um, with this particular team, this could be doable. You've got you've got intervals that are around 130, 135% for not for a few riders, uh, rider HI uh, notwithstanding. So once you've got all that information, you can download and fill in the call sheet. So print this off and add in all your rider details. And you can see there you've got the wattage by position that you can take from the the previous screen and fill in all of their details. You've also got their wattage by watts per kilo in position one and their wattage by FTP in position one. Add some of the same information for their position one statistics and then use this section to tick off riders as you go using a stopwatch in the background or uh, whenever riders uh, call themselves off and, and time themselves. And you can just tick people off and you can also cross out riders who are struggling or riders that get dropped. Um, hopefully uh, that explains how to use the time predictor. One extra piece if you want to use this every week yourself uh, and i'm not so interested in the, predict the predicted time but just want to have a call sheet you can use um, then you can actually use an excel version that i've created um, now in this one you use a one tab to fill in all the same information that we've talked about before watts per kilo watts and height and then click through to another tab and you'll find that you get very much the same information but actually you'll get uh, not just the watts by position, but also the watts per kilo and the percentages of FTP on the front. And all of this will pre-populate and then you can use the sheet again. And it will help you decide whether you rotate the whole group, uh, perhaps doing longer turns and shorter turns. Uh, or you might just um, potentially find that you get a beautiful alignment of figures across here and that you could ask one person to ride on the front at 100 percent, second wheel 100 percent, 100 percent. Um, and you might find that the person at the back, because they're weaker, uh, they're doing 100 percent as well, in which case you've got yourself effectively uh, a, a churning blob that isn't churning. <laughs> uh, it, the group is, is already sitting in a perfect line. And those are the decisions you need to make as a DS. Hopefully that explains to you uh, everything that you need to know. And good luck and ride on. Thank you.